What's going on, everybody? This is Childish. We're back at it again with the next Destiny 6 video. I ain't gonna lie, I had a video set up all ready to go to publish today, but as you might have guessed, I gotta push that one back a day because we have a new update here. Generally speaking, at the end of the month, uh, Netmarble has been pushing out a big update here, and I think this one is probably the biggest as of late. We got a new unit from the Trigar faction. We have this Destiny Forge, Destiny Shift thing, where we can go ahead and combine particular units in order to try to get a new unit. And then we also have the Friendly Arena, so we're gonna be able to kind of scrimmage some of our friends uh, in the uh, game. So without further ado, let's get right into it here. The first one we're gonna take a look at here is Gruenberg. Let's go ahead and max out his grade and his level. He is an attack scaling hero. Um, so we're looking at 943 base attack there when maxed out. First skill, Patriotic Bang. An AoE attack scaling skill that's going to provide even more damage if you have uh, upwards of four or more debuffs here. This also ignores a little bit of the target's defense, so that's good. When we move up to level three, we'll get a little bit of a boost here, but it looks like once we go up to level five, we will get a pretty substantial boost on the target's uh, defense when it is ignored. Of course, you know, as you progress here, we have the cooldown reduction and a little bit of an attack power boost, but the biggest thing that we're looking at right now, level three and level five respectively, uh, we want to get that ignore defense, you know, quite a bit high. Um, with respect to his second skill, this is going to be an AoE skill that's going to provide two different debuffs here, which is something that we want to take note of, as this particular skill is looking to do more damage based on the debuffs here. So it looks like you're looking to start out with skill two and then work your way on over to skill one, so you can provide quite a bit of damage. Um, this one here is going to be a lower chance to provide the target or decrease the target's critical rate um, and critical damage here. Uh, this will uh, obviously reduce the cooldowns and improve the damage overall. It looks like when we get to level four, we get a little bit more uh, uh, debuff duration. And then from level four to level five, we do have a slight change on the critical rate and the critical damage improvement here, uh, which is nice. Obviously, uh, when it's maxed out here, that's going to be a little bit better. So we'll take a look at the second skill. I mean, first skill is fine. We already kind of know what's going on there. Uh, it's going to be one hit. But the second skill, this is what we're looking at, um, which I think that was five attacks. That one that looks about five, five to six, right? So again, multiple chances, which is kind of something that we, we generally... We generally understand here when something has a relatively low, uh, you know, activation rate, it, it more often than not has a, you know, a multi-hitting effect here. So you got multiple chances to land that particular skill. So not too shabby, not too shabby. Of course, remember that you can improve it by means of status activation, whether you're getting it from orbs, crests, titles. So that's going to be able to help out a little bit. Um, with respect to what we're seeing just, you know, so far from his main skill, the damage dealing skill, um, obviously, this is really, really reliant on the debuffs um, in order to do damage here. So when we think about some other ignore defense monsters like, like Paper Fran, for example, um, you know, Paper Fran's going to be able to scale a little bit more when she has more buffs versus debuffs. The buffs are not going to really rely on, you know, the current, you know, status resistance of your particular enemy. It's honestly just going to rely on if the skill is available. If the skill is available, your buffs are going to be up and you're going to be able to do more damage here. So with respect to what I'm seeing right now, um, you know, my main team is Rock, June, Paper Fran, and then either Scissor Carlotta or Paper Soho. I'm probably going to, even if I get this unit, I would probably still run Rock, June. I mean, Rock, June's always going to be in there. I'm still going to run Rock, June. I'm still going to run Paper Fran because I prefer... I prefer going with the buffs versus the debuffs because then I would have to create a composition that revolves around debuffs or at least have two units or one more unit with respect to his skill uh, to provide that. And then again, we have to basically hope that those debuffs land in order to get the extra DPS there. So uh, his, his leader skill is kind of weird. I'm guessing it's broken. There's something wrong there. Striking ability. Um, again, 5,000 strike points. So that's, that's pretty low. You know, if you ask me, that's not too bad at all. I mean, that's good. Damage is re uh, reasonably decent, and again, 50% chance to land. And again, if it's hitting, if it's hitting upwards of five to six times, and you have status activation, you you can imagine that this is going to be something that you will be able to land. Last but not least, we got Gruenberg. This is the stats that we're currently rocking with. It looks like there's a little bit more attack on here, but more or less same stats overall. Um, first skill, Damnation. This is an attack scaling AOE that's going to be able to remove a buff from the target by one. When we push it up to level three, we're going to be able to remove two buffs. And then, of course, when we bring it up to level five, uh, not only do we get the cooldown reduction from 34 seconds to 30 seconds, but we do get the buff removal uh, from the target times three. So this is going to be a really, really nice skill for PvP. As you guys know, uh, certain uh, compositions really rely on 
the buffs needed to improve the overall damage or you know reduce the damage that we take so a composition like myself where i'm running rock june paper soho paper friend between paper soho and paper friends buffs being able to remove three out of those four buffs is really gonna uh, hurt me on the back end there so second scope we got pulse electro again this kind of reminds me of that paper frame here being able to improve the damage that we uh deal as well as decrease the amount here so it looks like we got small bonuses here just uh one by one on these uh two different ones here but when we push it up to level five we get a small reduction on the cooldown but both of these go up from 35 percent to 50 percent. so that's a nice little jump here from level three to level four we get the improvement on the duration but the big jump here comes from that level five when you get it maxed out now leader skill wise this one actually works this one has an attack leader skill for track our faction heroes by uh 50 percent and then the striking ability here is six thousand uh points so that's not too bad it's pretty average there um six thousand seven thousand i would say um aoe damage one here and this is going to be able to remove a buff uh remove buff from targets times three here so uh, obviously if you don't have the second skill maxed out and you want to play around with uh, a striking ability that you can take advantage of the Tragazar faction um you know great but i feel like with regards to Tragazar faction there's not a lot of units um that are generally in one particular team i mean unless you're playing around with maybe like a rock julian and whatnot you can take advantage of that attack leader skill but more often than not i like the universal leader skills ones that are going to provide some kind of ability for your whole entire party regardless of what faction they are but either way unique uh you know unique unit overall between the paper grunberg and the scissor version um again with respect to the scissor version i feel like a lot of people are going to kind of lean towards him as the one to get but because of the fact that he's relying on debuffs versus buffs, like I said before, I still think if you have the Paper Franch, he's going to be the way to go. Um, if I recall correctly, her defense, um, when maxed out here, is quite a bit more. I think it's like 1,200 or 1,300 maxed out. You know, even though the base attack or the, sorry, the base damage that she could do when it's maxed out, I think it's like 1,275. It's going to be a little bit lower. Um, but again, um, the ignore defense is going to be the same. But her base damage multiplier the defense is going to be a lot higher than him and when you think about the current meta and how strong defense scaling monsters are right now not only to do the damage but also to help mitigate the damage that you take i feel like that's going to be the better way to go now let's go ahead and take a look at the two new combined features we got destiny forge and destiny shift uh, with destiny forge we're going to use any and all heroes that we want in order to try to get a higher percentage chance of getting a natural five-star monster here so um, let's take a look at how much we can hold. It looks like it's going to be 20, upwards of 20 here. And with respect to the grade of the particular monster, this one's a two-star grade uh, that's going to provide 0. Point, sorry, 0. Point, 0. 0.06 percent, and then uh, a three-star grade is going to provide 0.17 percent. Now, take note that Moose is actually a natural two-star originally, but moving him up from a two-star, evolving him to a three-star, um, still gives you that 17 percent bonus here. Here's the natural four-star grade, and it's, it's a good thing that they remind you that it is a higher grade, so just in case you don't want to do it, this one's going to bust it up, you know, to a 0.67. And then we have also, if we want to see a natural five-star. When we put Arcana in here, we get a 3.33% chance, which is actually not too bad considering how many slots are available and some of the stuff that you can put in there. But with regards to how they have incorporated both the Destiny Forge and Chef, I think it's going to be a better value for you um, to do go ahead and use your natural five stars for the destiny shift here so let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick um, it looks like for with regards to original four star and original five star you're going to combine two original uh units from whatever it is four star five star alike to get one random uh unit here okay. keep in mind that if you put two units in here you still have the potential to get that duplicate unit if you want to go ahead and take that away that opportunity away you're going to have to put an additional hero on this bottom slot here so that is nice if you're trying to get something that is new however when it comes to the natural five stars those are obviously not going to come all too often so that's going to be quite the jump there from two five star fighters to three star fighters alike so considering that i probably would just do the two star two five star ones here if i were to do it and then with regards to the original four stars i may uh use all three slots here as you get a ton of four stars here and if you're looking for something relatively unique then yeah the additional hero i think is going to be worth the time here but that's just my opinion please feel free to put your guys's opinion down below on what you all think about that even though the destiny forge and the destiny shift is really really cool features i think the one that i'm most excited about is the friendly arena 
Um, a lot of the different uh, people that I've been friends with in this game, now I can go ahead and challenge them, or guildmates as well. I can challenge them by hitting the sparring arena function here. So to finish out the video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna challenge some of our YouTubers or streamers out there in the Destiny 6 community and see how we do. We'll probably pick about three to four and hopefully we can get one win. Now Kyle Blitz, he's actually done some Destiny 6 streaming on the Twitch side of things, so I know that uh, He's going to be a little bit of a challenge because I've seen him um, on his streams and he, <laughs> he has a pretty sick account. Uh, I remember the Rock Tune and the Paper Kerr. I don't remember what else he has. So, but uh, okay, a Paper Adonis here. So we're, we're in trouble. We basically need to sneak in. We need to sneak in our attack before he gets that invulnerability shield up. Okay, we got this. We got the hit in. The invulner the invulnerability shield is up. So now he's mitigating. We gotta pray to the RNG gods that Paper Kerr does not strip all of our damage mitigation buffs. He did strip one, but we were able to get the improvement um, from Rock Dune's second skill to have that defense buff up. Now we're sitting here waiting. Uh, we have to use our second skill from Paper Fran to go ahead and get that damage reduction, but we're in trouble. We're in trouble. Did we cast that too soon? No! We waited just a second longer. Oh my god. Oh wait, wait a second, wait a second. Come on. Press it. Press it! Stop stunning me! Oh, no! Stop stunning me! What's going on? <laughs> okay, okay. So, I obviously, at the very, very end, I'm just like, whatever, click everything, but just my luck, right? There's nothing I could do. I think I was stunned one more time by Paper Curse, so nothing I could do on that front here. But yeah, honestly, if you guys saw his account, you would know that there's really, like, no chance that we're going to win that particular match. Um, that's pretty pretty strong and I my particular composition is more of a yellow comp I do not have anything to combat him um, when it comes to his uh, His paper Adonis here. So s Fox 13. What do you know? He has a paper Adonis here. He is also a uh, Destiny 6 uh, YouTuber um, and he does obviously you guys probably know him from the summoners war community. We're gonna go ahead and test him out and See uh, if we can get some W's here Again, if he has Paper Adonis, this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be interesting. Oh my God, he literally has all the Meta Monsters. All right, all right. So we're gonna buff up. We're gonna do this there. Are we gonna get the second boost? Wait a second. What happened to my buff? What happened to my buff here? My buff didn't go up, so that kind of got delayed. Um, but we can go ahead and do this still. And do I want to wait? No, I don't want to wait. Oh, I want to wait. Hold on. Let me get this buff. Okay, okay. There we go. There we go. So it looks like we're gonna be able to. Uh, I think you just kind of work him down here. The invulnerability show was up, but it wasn't enough to keep him alive. So even though he had one of the most OP PvP units in the game, Scissor Shaolin, Paper Adonis, we were able to get the jump on him. Obviously, Rock June is uh, super OP. I'm going to have to credit that to Mr. Rock June, be able to sneak it in, uh, despite that Paper Adonis having that shield. Okay. I do see YDCB, but we'll definitely leave him for last here. Miss Xena Star. She is also a variety streamer on the Twitch side, so she's a little bit on the lower end. I don't think she has her units leveled up here, so we'll, we'll give her a little bit of time to get situated. Again, take note here, Ms. Xenostar. You haven't logged in in a day. I need you to check on in there, okay? Um, let's see. I know that Malari is up in here. Malari, it's like 10 o'clock in the morning my time. He logged in at 7 a.m., probably making a video here. Um, okay, so Scissor Colada, and we did see the leader of Rock Adonis, but I don't know who he's using that. Well, we'll go ahead and test them out, see what we got going on here. Obviously, Scissor Collada is a pretty OP unit, but we'll have to see what he pairs it up with. Okay, Rock June, Rock June. Okay, so um, he has Paper Adonis, but this is this is bad. We have this skill, this skill. Can we get this reduction? Oh, yes, there we go, there we go. No Paper Adonis. Paper Adonis skill wasn't up there, so we were able to sneak in that attack. So we got lucky. We got lucky. I will gladly take the luck on that aspect there. Mr. Malari. The challenge is up to you, sir. We will see you in the next video, okay? Let's go on to the next one here. Now we got, uh, let's see. I think there's one more here. And then I want to go ahead and hit up. Um, yes, okay, so Guy Spirit, if you didn't know, that's Mushbeard with Mushbeard Gaming. He's also a Destiny 6 uh, YouTuber. And let's see. Let's go ahead and attack him. He is running a paper Soho at the lead. That's weird. Okay. But I, I'm guessing that he just rotated his units. Okay. So, Paper Fran, defense scaling. So, ignore defense monsters. Yes. I like it. We'll take. We'll definitely take advantage of that. What does he got going on? Ooh. He's running Rock Adonis. He's actually a big, big fan of Rock Adonis. So, we're going to go ahead and try to get our skills up here. Boom. Boom. And we're good. Now, we have to heal up a little bit. Again... Uh, Rock Adonis providing a ton of buffs, but a little too soon, too late. And with respect to Arena, 
Um, it's it's being able to control it versus the AI. We're always going to have the advantage, in my humble opinion. So yeah, that one that one wasn't uh, too much of a difficulty. But I'm sure that once he does that on his video, he's going to wreck me to no end. So last but not least, um, we're going to go ahead and challenge Mr. YD GB. Okay, now we know we know that flat out. <laughs> yeah, I swipe my visa versus you got paid. Yeah, we know flat out that there's really no way to win this unless we get lucky um, with respect to Paper Adonis' skills. We have to kind of sneak in there, but Carlotta, um, this is this is going to be hard. This is going to be hard to get a sneak in there. Got to try to get the hit. Okay, okay. So we got the heal in. Now, Carlotta's using a skill, but Paper Adonis' uh, invulnerability apparently wasn't up here, so... Uh, we have to kind of sit back. Okay, he used it there, so this is going to be a little bit lower. Uh, now we're just waiting here. Let's go ahead and put, it, put the damage reduction here. Can I put it up? Come on, come on. We're waiting for this skill so we can get the reduction. Oh, shoot. Here comes that Rock Tyler. Don't crit. Okay, it wasn't like crazy OP damage. Oh, wait. Oh, my gosh. I almost did it again. I almost did it again. We're waiting for that skill to come down. The invulnerability shield is still up. Oh, jeez. Come on already. Oh. I don't know if I got it in time. I don't think it's going to be enough damage. But, uh, oh my god. Wait, he got it up again! Carlotta plus Paper Adonis is super OP. There's nothing we could do there. Oh my god, we got the defense buff up. Wait a second, wait a second. Oh, no, not nothing we could do. Nothing we could do. Okay, so, yes, if you have Rock June, Paper Adonis, Scissor Carlotta, you win the game. Uh, but no, we, we knew we were going to lose there. We were able to sneak in a little bit of DPS because Paper Adonis didn't have his... And vulnerability showed up, but once Carlotta and him get rolling, like, there's really not too much we can do. But either way, guys, you can kind of see the benefit of this. Obviously, you get an opportunity to see um, what some of your offenses do and what some of your friends' defenses do. So you can kind of uh, be able to, you know, catch that and kind of get things figured out. So how you want to, you know, incorporate or maybe change your composition, uh, possibly make it synergize well in order for you to, you know, progroove in your arena, you know, gameplay and whatnot here. So... That's going to be it, guys, when it comes to the update. Um, you know, outside of that, you know, the other things, we have the different types of packages as well as the costumes. Me, personally, there is a little bit of a stat bonus on the costumes, whether you wear it or not. But the cost of the costumes, to me, is not really worth it. With respect to the um, different, uh, you know, packages or whatnot, I still feel like the, the, the you know, starter packages, the seven-day bargain packages, and the uh, packages that involve the skill Ragoon are going to be the, some of the better ones to go with. But... That being said, it's completely up to you and how you guys decide to spend it. Um, keep in mind that this seven-day bargain package, this is supposed to have like three counters. You can only do it, you know, three times or whatever. But I, I basically been resetting this every single week. So by far, this is my favorite package to get. Um, and again, it's uh, I think this is since this is Singapore, it's showing four sixty-six, but it's like four bucks for the U.S. here. So. Definitely worth your uh, money if you want to go with that route. And then, of course, if you're looking to get a couple of packages that have that and, and want to get some skills for your natural five star monsters, I think the skill ragoon patches packages are going to be the way to go. Okay, uh, that's going to be it, guys. Thank you all so much for tuning in. It's your boy Chad, it's your child just plays checking out. Take care, and we will see you all in the next Destiny Six video. I'm out.